And we're back. So, um, of course, uh, last time we uh, fought a bunch of battles in um, Lu Luzuce, Luzuce, and uh, near Mecklenburg, Polabia, and we were able to conquer both uh, Budzishin and Mecklenburg, which was uh, very good, very good indeed. Now, because of our conquest of Mecklenburg, and because we lost a few troops in the process, um, our economy is now doing okay. So in a couple of turns, in uh, three turns probably, we will um, have climbed out of our deficit that uh, Bohemia starts with at the beginning of the campaign. And um, yeah, so we were also able to crush the armies of this province here, uh, Szczecinski, and um, Holstein as well. But I think uh, I don't really want to have a border with Denmark because I don't want conflict with Denmark at the moment. This province right here, um, this province is uh, the one I want to go for next. Absolute, absolutely. And um, yeah, then after that, uh, we can climb out of our budget hole, improve our um, economy, uh, build up our kingdom, or our duchy, and then perhaps challenge one of our neighbors. Probably this one, Poland. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, let's um, quickly uh, take inventory of what we've got. So we've got uh, three units of knights here, heavy cavalry, and three units of spear militia. We had four, but we lost one in the um, last battle. The That last unit got overwhelmed, unfortunately. And it's good that there aren't any more rebel armies running around because um, we would probably lose the rest of our infantry. And I don't know if our knights could be able to pull it out. But anyway, yeah, we leaned on our knights, and that really, uh, they really gave us victory. So, um, good. And it, it's good, because in this period, if you had an army that was made up of mostly uh, not-so-good units, knights, heavily, uh, well-trained, heavily armed knights would run them down, run them over. So, uh, yeah, everything looks good for now. There's no um, revolt threatening us, indeed. And the other thing I wanted to notice was um, in um, chivalry, um, there is some inherent paganism in certain buildings. So we see in this uh, small castle, the Mott, um we have 10% paganism, religious conversion from this. So I don't want to repair that first. Um, oh, actually... This also hurts public order as well, this building. So, um, yeah, I really have to uh, construct execution places um, quickly and uh, really, and also holy places so that um, paganism doesn't cause trouble in this province anymore. And once I do that, uh, I can repair these two buildings and then... Uh, uh, get everything back to normal. So good, let's end the turn and see what happens. Of course, the other thing is I don't have enough money to recruit anything else, so I just have to wait until I have the budget uh, to do something. So everything seems to be okay, pretty stable. Um, again, the only thing that worries me is um, my garrisons are really small, so actually I'm going to go uh, do some diplomacy here. I want to see if I can go trade with uh, perhaps Hungary. Because I'm already allied to um, the Holy Roman Empire, but I'll go talk to them and Hungary, see if I can get some more trade agreements to help my economy a bit more. And I also definitely want to construct roads in uh, Moravia here. Uh, because it doesn't have roads. 
And also these two provinces don't have roads either. I've really got to develop uh, my duchy a little bit here. Only Prague has roads. But in any case, uh, everything seems okay. We can't really do anything. Interesting, a Polish emissary and a Holy Roman expeditionary force have arrived. Interesting. The Zirids are okay with the Fatimids. I got a new son or a new child. And uh, yeah, minus a thousand. So things seem to be okay. So Mecklenburg, I'm going to increase your taxes a little bit because I've, I've really got to construct um, execution places and um, holy places uh, so that I can get paganism down and get public order up all across um, the duchy. So in any case, everything seems okay. Let's end the turn. Hopefully we don't get attacked. Okay. So things seem to be okay. M minus 200. Um, it seems like this province, Mecklenburg is now happy. So perhaps I will take the crown prince. I'll take the crown prince out of Mecklenburg. Everything is still fine, 80%. I'll give him um, Spear Militia. Okay, and um, yeah, Mecklenburg is okay, 75%. And perhaps I will uh, besiege this settlement and I'll uh, bring my other knights as well. And is that too much? Yeah, that's too much. I have to lower the taxes, so that's fine with me. So uh, I will use my knights to overwhelm their knights, and I'll take this other settlement. But it is a pagan settlement, so perhaps I should wait. Actually, I will wait, because indeed I have to um, retrain my units, improve public order so I can um, actually garrison and hold that city. So, and next turn, I'll actually be able to start um, retraining and repairing things all across the duchy. So, um, yeah, everything seems to be okay. So let's um, end the turn and see what happens. One of the good things about chivalry is that turn times are very fast. That's definitely one of the best things about chivalry is the performance. Of the mod. The, the mod is very, uh, performs very well. Um, in any case, uh, things are okay now. Our budget, we actually have a budget now, but still don't have enough money uh, to construct what I want. The first thing I want to do is construct holy places uh, in this town right here, and then execution places. So I've got to wait another turn. I don't want to retrain anything because I don't want. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't make a trade agreement. So let's check the Holy Roman Empire. We have trade rights, so that's fine. So let's go talk to the Hungarians. Would you like trade rights? Okay. Would you like an alliance? Okay. Well, that's nice. Would you like to exchange map information? Okay, I like the Hungarians. They're they're very nice to me. Okay, that's excellent. So we've got uh, trade rights with the Hungarians, and uh, that didn't really affect our profits that much. But uh, perhaps once I get roads up and running in this province here, where I actually have a border with um, the Hungarians, it it'll actually make more of an impact here. So it definitely seems like this northern area here in Eastern Europe is going to be my avenue of expansion since I'm allied to both the Holy Roman Empire as well as the Kingdom of Hungary. Uh, so that's looking okay for me. So I'm going to send my um, 
emissary up here to um, explore, see how big uh, the Grand Duchy of Poland is. And in any case, uh, things are looking okay. So let us construct holy places in this town. And that will um, really help us out because it will um, push paganism down. And uh, hopefully that will s help solve our public order problem. So next turn, I'll probably construct an execution place somewhere, perhaps in this settlement. Uh, but in any case, let's uh, end the turn. Pisa wants to talk to us, but they didn't talk to us. Okay, that's fine. If we had trading rights with Pisa, that would be nice as well. In any case, um, so Mecklenburg is actually pretty well developed, so that's nice for me. So actually, I can construct Slavic Warband and Archers. Slavic Warband, they're like... Um, javelinmen so not very good infantry and if they get hit by, by cavalry they will run they will run uh, chivalry is definitely chivalry's combat is definitely very much um, similar to I would say empire realism and uh, Napoleon realism if anyone has played those mods it's really easy to have units route if they are facing, I don't know if they're a levy unit facing cavalry or getting flanked. Um, it's very easy to cause a mass rout or get routed if you're not uh, playing smart, even if you have a superior force. So that's uh, one of the things I like about chivalry, actually. Um, in any case, uh, yeah, holy places will be constructed soon. They will be completed soon. Uh, let's um let's actually let me see the settlement details here okay things seem to be okay let us construct execution places because i definitely want to get my public order up in all of my main settlements so that i can really um devote more units to the front line and things of that nature in any case let's end the turn again And our court announcements. We have a new family member. That's nice. Um, and we've got execution places constructed and traditional holy places in this town. So, yeah, that really helps us quite a bit. So, um, in any case, uh, let's construct execution places there as well, actually. But, um, hmm. And then after execution places, you get to construct um, dungeons as well. And the dungeons give you even more of a bonus. And they let you recruit spies. And this interesting Varlets of Bohemia unit, which is... Um, uh, interesting. It's a good unit. But I'm not sure if that unit card was correct. But in any case, um, yeah, things are looking okay. So let us uh, let me check the settlement details here as well. So paganism is not a huge problem, but uh, I do want to construct more uh, execution places. But actually, what I really want to do is construct a land ownership here, so that will increase my tax income. And then I'll repair these buildings, and then I will upgrade this town, which uh, can be upgraded now. But in any case, um, let's end the turn. Okay, things are looking quite good at the moment. It seems like the Kingdom of France has broken a bunch of alliances, and the English have attacked the Fatimids. So um, that's interesting. In any case, I think what I will do now, what did I do last turn? I constructed, I, wa I um, wanted to construct land ownership in this province right here, just because I like the boost to tax income and the next 
uh, building in that building chain is law, and it really helps the law and order of the province. And I'll show you that uh, as well. But in any case, um, let's go for, let's actually wait. And then I'll construct an inn, which will give us the ability to construct dog heads, which is actually a pretty good uh, infantry unit. And they don't have dogs, uh, they don't have dog heads, but they have dog heads painted on their shields. So that's interesting. But these are pretty good, like, hardy axemen. They're not good against cavalry, but, uh, and they are, they are good at fighting in woods. They have a bonus in woods. And they have good morale, which is very nice indeed. Um, so th they will be, they're better than spear militia. They can really uh, cause headaches for enemy spearmen indeed. Uh, but they're not good against cavalry. That's their only weakness there. Uh, in any case, I should... Um, I'm going to wait until the next turn. I definitely want to construct um, an inn in Prague. Um, but in any case, I wanted to see something quickly. Roads, um, I definitely need to improve my economy before I can construct more roads because roads are expensive. Um, in any case, uh, things look to be okay. But actually, now that I think about it, I want to see how much it'll cost to repair these buildings. Um, hmm. Hmm. I don't think my public order is high enough for me to want to repair them. But uh, what I can do is uh, in Mecklenburg... No, I can't retrain my spear militia in Mecklenburg either. I have to upgrade the settlement and construct um, another building before I can retrain my spear militia. But um, actually, yeah, I have control posts in Prague which al allow me to train the spear militia. That's the other thing I like about chivalry is that uh, there's it isn't just barracks stables and that's how you recruit units you recruit units with very a very diverse assortment of um, buildings in your cities but in any case um, I've got to send my troops uh, back to Prague to be retrained yeah Mecklenburg is okay it's okay for now so let's uh, send my spear militia back to Prague and I have one in this town as well. So I will retrain my spear militia. And the other thing I like about chivalry is that these good infantrymen, the sergeants and the spear militia, so these are decent units. They're better than the... These are the very basic levies, levy infantrymen. They're not, they're not very good at all. Um... But in any case, um, Spear Militia and Sergeant Infantry, they require two turns to recruit. And Knights, if I want to recruit the early Knights, which are kind of like medium cavalry, um, they take three turns. So you really have to preserve your units. And I'm sad that I lost my one unit over there uh, for that reason. But in any case, uh, we're getting people retrained. Things are looking good. Uh, so once everyone's retrained, um, I'll be a lot happier, that's for sure. But let us... Um, okay, the Inn and Tavern here will let us construct Slavic Warband, which again is not, not the best unit, as we can see. It's just kind of a basic javelinman. Um, I think the enemy Slavic Cavalry will be able to overwhelm them quite easily unfortunately. But uh, let's go for execution places in Mecklenburg. Again, going for improving uh, public order. And let's uh, end the turn. Pisa wants trade rights. That's very nice. Uh, would you like an alliance? Okay. How about map information? Nope. 
Pisa doesn't want that, but they are trading with me, which is very good. And hopefully they have a trade route going through the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, so things are looking a little bit better. We completed land ownership. Retraining is complete. So let's send this spear militia back to Mecklenburg. And let's start uh, retraining our spear militia there. And uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good. I want to check on the um, religion here. Okay, religion in this town is looking good for now. It's looking good right now. So paganism has totally gone down the drain in this settlement. I think... Um, let's uh, construct... Let's repair... Let's repair the moat. I just want to be careful because I don't want public order to take too big of a hit. But actually, since I have extra garrison units that are being retrained right now, I'll repair both of them since I can. And uh, yeah, everything looks okay. Let's end the turn. And then it, once my economy really gets good and after I take this settlement here in Pomerania, um, I'll definitely think about this one, but it seems like Denmark has besieged this settlement. Uh, so perhaps I won't get to that one. But perhaps Denmark will want to trade with me, which is totally fine. Oh, the Seljuks have um, declared a ceasefire with everybody. Oh, and the Seljuks have become a client kingdom of the Byzantine Empire. So that's quite interesting. Perhaps at the end of this episode, I will um, toggle the fog of war and I will show perhaps the political state of the rest of the world, but I won't look at my borders just to make it fair. So you don't think I'm cheating or anything. But okay, everything looks okay in um, this town right now. So perhaps when I can, I will upgrade the settlement. Indeed. Um, but in any case, yeah, I definitely need to construct roads across the duchy because not having roads is quite annoying. But I have retrained everything and now my profits have gone down the drain. So that's unfortunate, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spear militia out of Prague. I'm going to go to Mecklenburg. Or I'll start building up my army near Mecklenburg. And, um... Wait a minute. There should be another one. Yeah, there is another one. Okay, I'll take him out of Prague. Prague is still okay in terms of public order. So I'll take uh, this guy. And, uh, yeah. So I'll build up my army outside Mecklenburg next turn. And I will attack this town and hopefully I'll have enough uh, troops to garrison the town as well. But in case I don't, I have an extra unit of spear militia here and I can always construct a levy infantryman if I can or if I need it uh, for the garrison. But anyway, uh, actually I can raise my... No, I can't raise my taxes there. Okay. Can I raise my taxes anywhere? No, I cannot. Which is unfortunate, but um, in any case, I think things are looking okay. Um, let's end the turn. And then once we take this settlement, hopefully our economy will be rocking and rolling again. So let's end the turn now. Of course, as the campaign carries on, I cannot keep an army just with some spear militia and uh, knights. I really have to uh, get better units, but 
That's the other thing about Bohemia, is that the unit roster is not that great. Uh, you have a real tough time there. But in any case, let's get our experienced Spear Militia in that army. And perhaps one more. And uh, this one goes to Mecklenburg. And um, perhaps I'll go with the Duke. Or actually, I'll go with the heir. So the heir and the prince will leave Mecklenburg. They'll join the army. And we will besiege uh, Szczecin. Uh, so this guy has pretty good command. Um, and he probably has a good number of knights. But with my two units of knights, I'll be able to flank him and charge uh, in his back, and uh, things should be okay. But in any case, um, things are looking all right. So let's um, end the turn and see what happens. It's a very good thing I besieged this town. Oh, it seems like there's a storm here. But um, in any case, uh, it's a good thing I besieged this town right at this moment because uh, the Polish army here was coming. They've got levy infantry and I don't know what else. Uh, so my army, if they did decide to attack me, I think my army would be able to beat them. But in any case, uh, things are looking okay. I'm keeping an eye on this uh, siege here. It seems like the, the Danish were not able to take the settlement in that first siege. But I'll keep an eye on that. Um, I really should I, stop forgetting about my emissary. I always do that. Um, yeah, it seems like the Kievans are quite a ways away from me. Um, so in any case, it seems like this um, Mol Moldova is under the control of the Cumans. Um, but in any case, uh, perhaps I'll have my emissary go back up and negotiate a trade deal with the Danish, because I will have a border with them soon. And I also have a port here, which I should be able to take advantage of in terms of trade. And it seems like I do have a trade route there that's uh, for me, even though I know it's a fishing village and I have to upgrade it. But in any case, um... Yeah, things are looking all right. Let's take a uh, check at our finances. 310. Again, things are a bit tight. So now let's uh, assault Szczecin. Yeah, he's got 45 knights. So this battle shouldn't be too tough. Uh, just like the last one, I'll use a spear militia to ram the gate or the wall. And then I will um, use uh, my crown prince's knights to charge their knights from the front. And then I will um, use my prince's knights to charge from the flank. So again, lovely, lovely buildings here. You've got a nice quaint windmill. And our other Spear Militia will just um, stand here and look nice. So let's uh, damage the gate here. And let's move our knights forward. So again, the enemy... A nice little view here. The enemy has a nice little town and a castle. And uh, again... Those uh, heavy cavalrymen, I believe they are the same kind of heavy cavalry as uh, the Polish have, the Mala Drużyna, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in any case, let's take him down. So let's uh, speed this up here.
Okay, and this gate is going down. One more hit. And there you have it. So let's uh, bring our knights into the castle and slowly envelop the enemy. Okay, so we've got the gate here. Let's move our um, Crown Prince's Knights into position. And let's move the other Prince's Knights uh, into flanking position. Again, a nice look at our Bohemian Knights here and our General, the Crown Prince. So let's charge. Let's take a lovely look at our cavalry charge here. They are bracing. Okay. So the crown prince has engaged. Let's actually set up our prince's knights over here. Uh, please. You're supposed to be running. Okay. Guys, why are you going that way? You can go to the right, on the right side of the well, you know. I would really prefer it if you charged from the flank. Okay, it seems like they're getting into position. They, they really don't like going on the right side of this well, and they didn't want to use this street here. But in any case... It looks like a victory will be ours anyway, but I don't want to risk losing our general in indeed. And now that the enemy's surrounded, it's only a matter of time. Just their general, and he's done. Janus Vos. You fought well, but you had no chance. Okay, so this province is ours. And the public order is pretty bad. I think I'll enslave uh, the populace, uh, resettle them in my cities. Let's take a look at public order, and that is bad. So we've got to think of something. Definitely needs a holy site, because the local faith is paganism. So definitely needs a holy site here. And I definitely need uh, more troops to be garrisoned. So let's... Take this spear militia out of this town, and uh, they don't want... No, and that's not good. Okay, 80%. If I take this uh, nobleman out, things are still okay. So let's move the nobleman to our new city. 35%. How about uh, the duke? Okay, I really need the Duke in Mecklenburg. Yeah, I need the... Or actually... Let's take the Duke out again. Okay, with a low tax rate, Mecklenburg is alright. Low tax rate? Oh, that's so close. That's so close. I don't want to risk losing any troops or noblemen. So what I'll do is I'll move my troops out of the city. I'll go to a very high tax rate. And then if the rebellion damages uh, the palisade or the moat, uh, perhaps as, in, as was the case in this province here, north of Bohemia, perhaps um, 
that will sway the populace towards being happy. And then I'll re-garrison the settlement. Uh, in any case, things are looking okay. And economically, uh, things are still not that great. Oh, because I had to lower taxes a little bit. But in any case, um, let's end the turn and see how bad this riot is. Okay, so we've got rioting. Um, but if we garrison again, will that work? No, it will not. That's unfortunate. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, perhaps in case this settlement revolts and gets out of my control, uh, I definitely don't want to risk my characters. So I'm going to leave the city here. Um, it seems like I might have I might have a border scuffle with uh, the Polish in case this settlement rebels to them. Um, but to save more money, I'll uh, remove the holy places that were being constructed. And I think I have to get ready uh, for war. So I definitely need to recruit some troops. So what I'm going to do is I do have a pretty good number of infantry in that unit there. And Slavic Warband has quite a few soldiers, so, so they will be good for uh, garrisoning, indeed. So I think what I'll do is I will um, recruit a Slavic Warband in Mecklenburg. And uh, in this town here, I cannot recruit Slavic Warband, but I will recruit a Levy Infantry. Um, which, again, has 160 troops in the unit, so they're a good garrison unit. Uh, and that will allow me to uh, take my Spear Militia out to join the field army in fighting Poland. And hopefully, Poland does not attack this way. But in any case, in case they do that, I will construct sergeant infantrymen in the capital. And actually, it seems like I'll do one Sergeant Infantry and two Spear Militia. And um, yeah, then I'll have a real army on my hands. At least for the early game here. Of course, I'll have to improve the quality of my armies uh, for the later game. But in any case, let's uh, end the turn. And I think we might have a battle on our hands. Okay, so actually, yeah, they damage the inn and tavern, which helps public order. So I recruited Levy Infantry and Slavic Warband. If we uh, put our troops back. Okay, so I really should have finished the um, Holy Site, but I didn't know. I didn't know um, if they were going to rebel to Poland there. So I still don't have enough troops to garrison. If I send in the Slavic Warband, it's still not enough. How about with this Levy Infantry? Still not enough. So that's not nice. Okay, Levy Infantry, go back to that town. I'll go back to my original plan and uh, take our Spear Militia out and have them join the army. And I'll do that with the other Spear Militia as well because uh, le having levies in a field army is um, more harm than good. Uh, it does more harm than good. It seems like the other siege of this uh, settlement has also failed, so they've besieged it again. 
I should have paid more attention, because if their siege failed, I could have besieged it myself. But in any case, um, should I repair it? I'll repair it. But in any case, um, yeah, things are looking okay. I'm constructing uh, three units in Prague. So things are looking uh, pretty good. Let's end the turn. Okay, so as I thought, uh, we've got a rebellion on our hands, pro-Polish rebellion. And uh, it seems like their army is not very good. And they've got this rebel army here. Um, I think I'll be able to take them out. I'll, uh, because I, I don't want their reinforcements to join up with their army because that will... I think I'll still be able to beat them, but that will cause uh, unnecessary casualties. So I'll move in quickly with the infantry and knights. Uh, another fog battle. The AI always chooses fog. I hate the fog. So I'll have... Um, equal strength in, uh, cavalry on the right and left flanks. And I'll have my infantry in the center here, perhaps. I will um, have a battle line of three spear militia and then a reserve of one spear militia unit. But in any case, uh, if the enemy has a long battle line, I will reform uh, my troops. But in any case, um, actually I think I will reform them. And I'll move everyone forward quickly uh, because I, I really want to get these guys quickly indeed. Okay, so the enemy army is in the woods here and they really don't have any units that can stand up to my knights except for their knights but uh, their knights look to be inexperienced and um, not so threatening so uh, what I'm going to do is I'll move my infantry forward quickly and I'll have my cavalry on the right flank quickly charge in to cut them off. And then I'll uh, surround them and charge in from the left. And this left charge should be a devastating one. So I'll hold them off from the right, charge in with the infantry up the middle. And then um, have a devastating charge from the left. So let's have our big unit of knights here charge. Oh, the fog is gone. That's nice. I'll have my other unit of knights, experienced knights, charge their general. And I'll have the duke participate in a devastating charge from the left. And I think uh, this army should crumble under the combined force of everyone charging at the same time. And with the charge from the flank, these levy units should rout, and they did. Again, spear militia again, are much better than levy infantry. Levy infantry are basically just a last resort, or if you need cheap garrison units, because it's not like they're much cheaper than the Spear Militia either. They're, they're, you can recruit them faster. Okay, so I caused the mass route I wanted to do here. Um, the enemy general, I will uh, charge him with the Crown Prince's forces. And the enemy's second army is coming in quickly.
So I'm going to have my infantry uh, set up in a good location here and uh, wait. I've only lost a few knights and a few infantrymen, so that was uh, quite good. Okay, it seems like the enemy is going to get away here. Unfortunately, the enemy general. Um, but in any case, let's finish, uh, finish uh, chasing down as many of these guys as we can. Okay, those guys are gone. And then these guys. And please finish chasing down these Slavic mercenaries before you get in contact with their army. They're attacking me now, and uh, I don't have a second army to deal with, so I'm content to wait for them to come at me. Okay, so I'm going to set up, start setting up my cavalry, get them in position uh, for the second phase of the battle. Okay, so it seems like All my units are pretty much uh, ready. Where's this unit? Oh, they're chasing these guys. Okay, finish up doing that. And the enemy has not arrived yet. But it seems like the enemy wants to move close with their Slavic cavalry, the Slavic raiders. So if that's how they want to play this, then I'm fine uh, charging at them with my uh, Crown Prince's knights. Even though they're tired, um, they are experienced, they have a silver chevron, and they shouldn't have much trouble with uh, the enemy uh, Slavic raiders. And maybe they are having some trouble, actually. Okay, I think uh, we've chased these guys down enough. It's just so sad to leave one. Please finish. Okay. So come back here. Okay, we are losing some knights, and I think it's because... Um, we're not fresh. Um, but we should be able to route those uh, Slavic cavalry without losing, without going below uh, 45 knights uh, for that other unit there. But we've really got to get our cavalry into position. Uh, so what we're going to do, is our spear militia... They're not doing so bad, so let's march forward. Okay, it seems like the Slavic Raiders are done. They got more of our knights than I would like, but uh, it seems like they're finished, and they are. So let's set up our right flank. Unfortunately, our knights are tired on the right flank, hopefully on the left flank. Oh, they're charging. Okay, let's counter charge with our spear militia. And uh, the enemy have some axemen. Okay, so again, it seems like um, my knights on the left are fresh, so what I want to do is um, I'll charge in from the flank here. Okay, and that worked.
That worked. We'll charge in from the back there. Oh, this other unit has charged at my knights here. But again, it's Slavic Raiders. I'm not that concerned. Oh, they've got Viking mercenaries. But it seems like they're very light uh, Viking mercenaries. So in any case, uh, things look uh, to be just fine. So uh, again, it seems like the last unit remaining is this unit of Slavic Raiders. So what I'll do is I will uh, charge at them from the flank with my Spear Militia. I did lose a few units uh, due to their Axemen charge. Um, but other than that, my Spear Militia did very well. Or my whole army did very well, really. Let's take these Viking mercenaries down because um, it seems like they were the most uh, threatening infantry in this army. Okay, and their general has routed. Seems like their captain got away. But uh, let's uh, finish chasing down as many of these guys as we can. Perhaps that unit retreated, actually. But in any case, the aftermath of the battle. A complete Polish rout. Slavic raiders all over the place. A few knights, few of my knights, unfortunately. More Slavic raiders. Levy infantry. The horrors of war. But yes, the uh, Polish army was definitely uh, not prepared to face me. But I mean, you know what? They attacked me. It's not my fault. So let's uh, finish taking out those Viking mercenaries. And everyone else. And it seems like uh, that's it. A heroic victory. Oh, and our budget is uh, back to being really bad. But that's um, not unexpected. So the reason I wanted sergeant infantrymen is because uh, they have a bonus fighting cavalry. And uh, I'll need that. Uh, what? How did this happen? This settlement rebelled to Poland? That's interesting. And that would explain uh, my economy's uh, st status. In any case, uh, we've got to quickly move against Poland. Uh, so let's uh, attack Chechen. Let's build a ram. We should be able to take down these guys pretty quickly. Unfortunately, their general got away in that last battle. Uh, but in any case, our public order is good. Our army didn't lose uh, that many troops in that last battle, which is very nice. Um, and we're, we have more troops on the way. 
Okay, so Poland only has uh, one unit there. Um, perhaps I can besiege them with a kind of token force. So if I remove my spear militia from this place, yeah, I can do that. So let's um, get a token force together here in the south. And let's launch a little expedition against Olomouk. Oh, they've got troops there. So I should uh, retreat, actually. That was a bad decision by me to do that. Um, but in any case, hopefully next turn I'll retake this city, and then I'll move through Poland, take Poznan, take Rokla, come back to Olomouk, and then move against Kraków, the Polish capital. Okay, so let's uh, withdraw from this battle. Okay, and they left me alone. So that's good. I should uh, actually use these guys to garrison Prague and protect it uh, until the Duke can return. So let's, um, let's assault Szczecin. So the enemy doesn't have too many troops. I Again, I should be able to, uh, this time, um, use a spear militia to break down the door and then overwhelm the garrison with my uh, four units of experienced knights. Since I don't have the money to retrain units, uh, knights are the name of the game in the early game. Okay, so let's um, let's get our cavalry together. Let's get our um, battering ram into position. Let's have our infantry ready in reserve just in case. So chivalry has this nice little retextured uh, battering ram which looks nice and medieval. So let's go break down the gates and take this town again. And again, let's um, put our infantry close just in case I need uh, their help to overwhelm the defenders. And let's um, see what the enemy plans to do here. I don't think they have anything they can do to me. Eight. 98, and it's going to be broken. So I'll rush in with the Duke's um, cavalry and the heir's cavalry, and then I will uh, do flanking maneuvers with my other knights my smaller units of knights. So very nice, we've captured the gateway already. And I really like Chivalry's stylized um, 2D artwork. It's all very uh, immersive. So the Grand Duchy of Poland. Okay, so they have engaged uh, the Duke's troops with their knights. So we've got to overwhelm their troops here. Let's take a look at their axe bearer mercenaries. Again, they look similar to the Viking mercenaries. Um, but things are looking okay. Let's move our infantry in a bit closer. Actually, I wonder if it's... No, it's not necessary. I will um, move my other groups of knights in, and we will perform flanking maneuvers, and that should be uh, that for this battle. We are losing a few knights, especially because uh, their knights are actually pretty experienced. Uh, but in any case, that won't change the outcome of this battle. 
We've lost more knights than they have, in fact, but we have to hold them in position uh, until we can get our troops into flanking position. So come on, Pathfinding. Why are you... That's interesting. Pathfinding, please. Please. Guys, please get into position. Okay, so let's um, move into a better position. You can go this way, it's okay. And it seems like our knights are finally pushing back on them. They've lost uh, quite a few Drujina heavy cavalry in this process. And this uh, flanking maneuver should finish them off. Okay. So let's hit their Slavic mercenaries from the back there and their um, heavy cavalry as well. We've lost the gateway for some unknown reason. And we got it back. So it seems like the Polish general is surrounded and this is going to be the end of him. He's not going down. Someone get him. Okay, we got him. Very good job, Bohemians. Now let's... Uh, oh, we already got these guys. Well then. Very nice. We didn't lose uh, any infantry. Okay, so let's um, resettle the populace again. And yeah, this uh, province is still a problem due to uh, the paganism. So I've got to abandon it. But in any case, uh, right now, crushing uh, Polish power is uh, of the essence. Time is of the essence here. So uh, we will assault and take Poznan, and then we will take Rokla, and then we will take uh, Krakow, and then after that uh, we will liberate Olomouc, and uh, yeah, that will be our revenge. Cash report, things are horrible, but hopefully once we take uh, Poznan, I'll Tax the heck out of you guys. You caused the war. So, um, in any case, oh, we've got a site of the famous battle between Bretislav and Nigoslav. Let's uh, end the turn and see what Poland has in store for a counterattack. Okay. Oh, so this is the Polish king, and he's got, or this is the Polish duke, and he's got uh, quite a lot of command. Luckily, uh, Bratislav is not so bad himself. And uh, this enemy army here, this reinforcing army, is just a Slavic warband. We should be able to crush them and then overwhelm the knights of the Grand Duke of Poland. And then after we get the Grand Duke of Poland, I think um, that will be quite nice for us. Because he has a lot of command. I'm afraid of his unit. So again, let's um, set up a couple knights on the, on the right, couple knights on the left. Infantry in a battle line. 
Um, yeah, so let's uh, quickly finish off these um, Slavic mercenaries. Let's quickly overwhelm these guys, get our guys to rest, and uh, overwhelm... Yeah, so this is not going to go well for these guys. This is not a place for shirtless barbarians. This is the territory of Bohemia now. Oh, why, why are you guys walking? I wonder if they were going so slow. So this charge is going to be devastating. And yeah, they're, they're finished. Oh. And that's exactly what would happen if a bunch of shirtless guys went up against uh, some experienced knights. Okay, so let's uh, set our infantry up just in case we need them. So let's get the Duke. I'll probably have the Duke um, pin the enemy knights and then use my other units uh, to charge at the flanks of the Polish Grand Duke's uh, retinue. So guys, please take care of these um, Slavic mercenaries here. Okay, so let's take a look at the Grand Duke of Poland. Maladruzhina, heavy cavalry, and there's the Grand Duke himself. And there's his captain dying. Okay, so uh, it seems like he's getting close. So we've got to get our cavalry into position. Get them on, a, on the same level playing field. And I don't want to lose too many infantry to these knights because, uh, again, Spear Militia, even though they have spears, they are not well trained like the Sergeant Infantry and they don't have the Cavalry bonus. So they, uh, they will lose a lot of troops to Cavalry unnecessarily. But you know what? I think I have to charge the Duke in. I don't have, uh, I don't have time to waste because I don't want him to engage uh, my infantry unless I have to. Let's see this epic charge between the Duke and the Grand Duke. Okay, so I'm losing knights. We've got to get into position. Please finish off these mercenaries, please. Okay, our Duke is losing. Come on, Prince. I forget your name. But let's have an epic charge here. Very nice. Oh, that was good. So let's uh, charge in from their exposed area here with my, um, oh. Oh, I'm losing knights there. Um, perhaps I'll pull these knights back. Please run. And I'll uh, have the 
Crown Prince's knights charge from the back. I can make a, a wider line for a charge here. I don't want to lose my duke, so I've got to move quickly. Let's charge. Hopefully this charge is more effective. That was very nice. 45, okay, that, that was quite nice. So let's um, pull back, pull back our knights again. And this time I'll charge with the prince's knights. And there you go, that was nice. How about one more with the crown prince? And that was nice too. But the Duke of Poland, the Grand Duke, is on the left flank there. So I'm going to pull my crown prince out. And I'm going to charge at the back of the Grand Duke of Poland himself. So let's get him. He withstood that charge, but I think he's probably finished. Don't let him get away. If we can get him, we'll take uh, Poznan right away. We got him. Very nice. Oh, this is not so nice. Okay, what is this army? Okay, so this army is uh, not so threatening. Uh, they do have these axe mercenaries, which are pretty good, but again, they don't have a bonus against uh, cavalry. So that's good for me, since the backbone of my army are my remaining knights. So unfortunately, I did lose quite a few knights in that last battle, especially against the uh, Grand Duke. But... Um, I think this battle shouldn't be too difficult. So let's, um, I'm going to set up, actually, since this battlefield is skewed this way, it's higher on the left, I'm going to uh, set up my cavalry on the left. And I'll have my uh, infantry set up that way as well. And then once we charge down the hill, I think that'll be very devastating for the enemy army. So let's advance. I'll set up these two on the right. Or actually, sorry, I'll set up the Duke on the left along with uh, one of the princes. Or actually with both princes this time, because uh, I want to charge with... Okay, actually with just uh, one prince. I'll keep up the, a similar formation here. But let's keep moving forward. It seems like the enemy wants to get a better position here, perhaps. But uh, you never know with the AI. But I'll uh, quickly get into position. So uh, let's get the Duke and the other Prince into position quickly. And actually, let's uh, set up our other units of Knights up here so that perhaps we can have the height advantage uh, from there as well. 
So let's advance. Infantry, advance quickly. So let's charge in. Knights go for their Slavic raiders. And uh, spear militia, charge in please. And knights uh, go after their general Slavic raiders. And the Duke will come to reinforce the Spear Militia, so I don't lose uh, too many troops there. Okay, so our Spear Militia are engaged. Their left has collapsed due to my... due to the charge of my Knights. Let's keep our Spear Militia moving. Let's get the Duke into position. Okay, our Knights were successful on the right flank. So let's uh, protect our Spear Militia here. Get our uh, Crown Prince into battle. Let's get those Axe Bearer mercenaries. Oh, the Axe Bearers were actually pretty good at uh, whittling down my infantry there, but uh, they have been routed. Oh, so these Slavic mercenaries are still fighting. We'll have the Spear Militia support uh, the cavalry in case these Slavic mercenaries don't want uh, to rout. And they saw my infantry approaching and they routed. Excellent. Of course, we also have the height advantage here, extremely. Uh, so, yeah, nice battle. But let's uh, finish chasing down the remainder of these troops. Yeah, so my prince there is chasing down those guys. My prince here is chasing the axe bearers. My crown prince is chasing someone. Oh, they had archers here. I didn't even notice they had archers. And let's uh, finish chasing down whoever's left. Some of them got away, but all in all, a very successful battle. Okay, these um, axemen don't want to be finished. Again, we have a guy being pursued, running behind my cavalry. Very nice indeed. So he'll be Finished off right now, I'm sure of it. Okay. Yeah, not, not the best route for him to take. But another clear victory. And Poznan is ours. But we've got a couple more Polish armies heading our way. So let's... um. I want to resettle the populace. Uh, let's resettle the populace. Oh, and uh, Olomutz rebelled back to us, and I've got a bunch of really bad spearmen. So that's interesting. I don't want these spearmen. These guys are the worst. Um, so, I got some more spear militia in Prague. An earthquake rocks Aleppo, the enemy army routed, and things are looking pretty good. And Poznan is also looking pretty good. It helps that it's uh, pretty well developed, and it's got uh, province churches, and a Christian shrine. But... Um, 
uh, yeah, this province is not looking good, which is unfortunate, but since I've got like 10 levy infantry in Olomouz, perhaps I can move a couple of them. Um, how about three of them? I'll move them up here to the middle. Oh, I forgot about their city over here. Okay, okay. So I know we're getting uh, to the end of this episode. I should have been more careful there. That was silly. That was silly of me. But I've got three good infantry units here in Prague. Uh, but I'm actually going to keep them there. Our financial situation is uh, still not great, but we've got to beat uh, this army here. So let's um, take the army out of Poznan. Okay, Poznan is not happy, but let's... Um... Okay, this guy's a good administrator. Can you administer Poznan? Uh, not enough. Okay, my vassal. Can you help? No, you can't. Spear militia? Almost. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I know what to do here. Let's take our um, nobleman out. His spear militia out. Let's uh, push that army back. And then... Um, we've got to go back to Poznan, unfortunately, because I have to garrison the town. You know what? Spear militia, you go back to Poznan. Levy Spearman. Levy Spearman. You guys... Okay, I'm gonna bulk up your forces. You guys besiege Roklaw. Let's maintain the siege. Bretislav. Let's beat uh, good King Wenceslaus here. And then um, perhaps I can send a nobleman to assist my levy spearmen uh, that are besieging Rokla. And that will solve uh, a whole bunch of problems. Let's start this battle. Let's see uh, what the enemy has. Uh, I'll set up my spear militia in the woods here, my cavalry. I'll move into position on the left. It seems like the enemy has a very good defensive position here. So I'll move my guys into the best position I can possibly move them into. I'll set up my spear militia. Let's uh, increase the speed. And it seems like the enemy is quite content uh, to stay on their hill there. But who knows, perhaps they'll charge down. Let's uh, check out our units moving forward. They seem to be doing just fine. And the enemy seems to be content staying on the hill. They move down just a tiny bit. Let me see what they've got up close. Just some archers, levies, slavs, axemen, and levies. Uh, so they've got nothing. Which is uh, good for me.
So let's move our cavalry into an even better position. And let's move our infantry into an even better position as well. And then let's see if the enemy maneuvers and tries to do something. Yeah, so it's everything seems to be going quite all right here. They're repositioning. But now at least we're on an even, even playing field in terms of uh, the terrain. And in fact, yeah, we're in an even playing field here. So let's get our infantry a little bit closer. Increase the speed. Let's see if the enemy decides to finally charge. No, it seems like they don't want to. But if they're bunched up like that, they're in the middle, as Rome Total War AI likes to be. And if they're okay with uh, getting flanked in a horrible position, uh, perhaps I'll just charge with my knights and uh, crush them utterly crush them. I think we can crush them right now. Let's go, Duke. Yeah, we, we're chasing them down the hill now. Oh, I think I got 50 archers in about two seconds. So that was quite nice. And I'll have my prince hit their levy infantry as well. We've got the height advantage now. And the enemy cannot do anything about it. Their axe mercenaries are um, still putting up a fight, but they should be defeated momentarily. And yeah, this is another great bohemian victory. And our spear militia are chasing down some of their fleeing units there, which is nice. Oh, we already crushed those guys over here, the axe mercenaries. Uh, they've all fallen. So that turned out uh, quite well. So let's uh, speed up time over here. Duke, go and finish off those levies. And then I'll have my crown prince help out mopping up the levies over there. And uh, that should be it. We can take another look at the aftermath of this uh, horrible tactical failure for the enemy. Uh, they did get a couple of my knights here, unfortunately. But just a couple. Their axe mercenaries took it, took down a couple of my knights. And their captain, good King Wenceslaus, is done. Another great Bohemian victory. So now, uh, Poznan. Poznan is actually doing okay. So let's, um, wait just a second. Okay, so let's maintain the siege. And now Bratislav can uh, help besiege Rokla. And uh, we will crush them. And then Rokla will be ours. And then uh, we'll combine our forces. And um, Krakow will be ours, and then Plok, or Plotsk. 
Plutsk, I believe. Plutsk will be ours. So uh, the only problem here is this settlement right there, but um, there's not much I can do about that. Um, I'll move a spear militia up to Bujishin. Um, and you know what? Perhaps another spear militia, just in case. Um, and I'll, I'll see what I can do about this. But uh, let's increase the tax rate again so that uh, we don't lose too much money next turn. Nope, cannot increase the tax rate in Poznan. Um, okay, and I think uh, it's been an hour and a half, so that will be it for this episode. But next time we'll uh, continue the adventures of uh, Bretislav the Brave, who is an excellent duke indeed. And, um, yeah, he's the Duke of Bohemia, famous battle victor, captured banner, captured shield, um, utterly fearless, chivalrous mercy, great defender, skilled cavalry commander. So that's great. That's all great. Um, hopefully, Bolas, uh, I'll be sad when he passes away, because uh, I hope I can finish this war before Bratislav uh, passes away. Um, even though his son is also very good. He doesn't have nearly um, the command skill because Bretislav has been commanding all these battles. But in any case, uh, things are looking up for Bohemia, and I'll uh, see you guys next time.